Today, we are looking at some infamous criminals still on the run from the FBI. And who knows where they are now? Some of these criminals are marked as deadly and dangerous, so there's even more to fear. Enough talking about that though, let's get on with this video. Starting off this countdown, we have Eugene Palmer. Eugene Palmer is said to be the oldest man to make it on the FBI Most Wanted list. On September 24th of 2012, Eugene Palmer shot and killed his daughter-in-law, Tammy. Apparently, Eugene Palmer's son, John Palmer, was having a rough time with his relationship with Tammy. Eventually, they started seeing other people, and Tammy filed for a restraining order against John. This made Eugene very angry. Days before the murder, Eugene confronted Tammy and they had a huge argument. On the day of her murder, he shot her from a distance before fleeing in his truck, which was later found abandoned. Despite multiple searches, Palmer has never been found. The FBI is offering a reward of up to $100,000 to anyone who can provide helpful information leading to his arrest. And at number 9, we have Robert Fisher. Robert Fisher has been on the run since 2001. As of now, he would be 60 years old. It started on April 9th, 2001, when Fisher took the lives of his wife and two children before blowing up their house. He was charged with a triple homicide and arson, and he's been on the run ever since. On April 20th of that year, his car was found in a forest near Payson, Arizona, but Robert was nowhere to be found. To this day, he remains a very wanted fugitive. Fisher has notable surgical scars on his lower back and is said to chew tobacco regularly. There is currently a $100,000 reward for information leading directly to his arrest. However, it's said that he is in possession of a number of weapons, including a high-powered rifle. So he is armed and dangerous. It's believed he is in New Mexico or Florida, but the FBI doesn't know for sure. In our 8th spot today, we have Victor Manuel Jarina. Victor Manuel is one of the longest criminals on the FBI's most wanted list. Victor was a car guard working for the Wells Fargo Express Company. On September of 1983, Victor arrived at work before pointing a gun at his supervisors and handcuffing them. He then stole $7 million in cash before fleeing. This was the largest cash robbery in the US history at that time. He had planned this with two other men, but had turned on them and took the money for himself. On May 14th of 1984, he became a member of the FBI's top 10 most wanted fugitives. In 2010, he became the fugitive to have spent the most time on that list. To this day, there are no real leads as to where he may be, but it's thought that he's living in Cuba. The FBI is still offering a million dollar reward for information leading to his arrest. Moving on to number seven, we have William Bradford Bishop. William Bradford Bishop Jr. is a former United States Foreign Service officer who is now a wanted fugitive. On March 1st of 1976, Bishop started to spiral after not receiving the promotion that he really wanted. He then left his work early, drove to the bank, withdrew money, and then bought a sledgehammer, gas can, shovel, and pitchfork. He then returned home where he killed his wife, mother, and three sons. He then drove the body several miles away before burying them in a wooded swamp, and then he set that area on fire. There are currently no leads as to where he might be now. If he was alive, he would be 85 years old. Now, over the years, people have claimed to have seen him overseas, but there have been no solid leads. It's believed, though, that he's somewhere in Europe, which really narrows it down. In our sixth spot today, we have Arnaldo Jimenez. Arnaldo is wanted for the death of his wife, Estrella Carrara. On May 11, 2012, the pair got married at Chicago City Hall, and they were as happy as they could ever be. That night, they had dinner with some family and friends before heading to a nightclub. However, on their way home, the couple got in a heated argument. It resulted in him fatally stabbing his new wife before dragging her body into their apartment. He then placed her in a bathtub and fled. After not picking her kids up from a family member's house, people began to worry and she was reported missing to the police. It's thought that he fled to Mexico. A reward of up to $100,000 is available for information leading to his arrest. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark today with Hazel Leota. In August of 1999, Hazel Leota placed an ad in a Lonely Hearts column looking for love. That's when she met Charles Baker. Immediately, she was attracted to Charles because he was a widow who recently got a large sum of money from his insurance. 
So shortly after meeting, the two moved in together. In September of 1998, Charles was found dead in his house. His car and $45,000 of his money was missing, and so was Hazel. She had killed him and took off with his cash and car. Turns out Hazel wasn't who she said she was. No shocker. In fact, she had over 25 different aliases. She's also been married 10 times and is wanted in Lincoln, Nebraska. The last time anyone saw her was in December of 1998 when she was spotted in a truck stop near Wheat Ridge, Colorado. She hasn't been spotted since. If she's alive to this day, she would be in her 70s. In our fourth spot today, we have Alvin Scott. Alvin Scott is wanted in a double murder. In August of 2001, his wife left him and was living with a male friend in the meantime, and Alvin did not like this. On the day of their divorce proceedings, Alvin stalked the two and killed them both. Alvin has more than a decade's experience in military training and was an experienced PI, so he was able to stalk the two and shoot and kill them from his car. He then fled and has been on the run ever since. It's believed that he has multiple fake passports and multiple fake identities. And due to his experience in the military, he's been hard to track. He is one of the FBI's top 10 most wanted fugitives, and there's a $100,000 reward for any leads on his whereabouts. In our third spot today, we have Joe Matthew Constance. On June 5th, 2011, Joe Matthew Constance broke into his ex-wife's house looking for her. However, she was not there. There were, however, other people there, so he threatened them with a gun, being like, tell me where she is or I'll kill you. They did not reveal where his wife was. So Joe searched the whole house and eventually did find her on the property. He then shot and killed her before fleeing. He was charged with first degree murder, aggravated assault, and aggravated burglary. However, he's still never been caught. There is a $20,000 reward out there for any information leading to the arrest and conviction of Joe. Moving on to number two, we have Jason Derrick Brown. On November 29th, 2004 in Phoenix, Arizona, Jason Derrick Brown shot and killed an armored car guard outside of a movie theater before fleeing with the money. Since 2004, he has been wanted for murder and armed robbery. Now, Jason portrayed himself as a wealthy man, but in reality, he was tens of thousands of dollars in debt. This was his motive for the murder and robbery. If he's still alive, he would be 52. FBI has made it clear that Jason is armed and very dangerous. There is a $200,000 reward for anyone who can provide information on Brown's whereabouts. And in our number one spot today, we have Badrush Kumar Patel. After getting married in India, Badrush Kumar and his wife Palak left their home country to start a new life in the United States. In fact, they both got jobs at Dunkin' Donuts and they worked together. On April 12th of 2015, while working a night shift, Palak was on the phone with her family, crying, saying that she wanted to go back to India. In fact, the pair's visas had expired. A while later, he led her to a back room in the store and stabbed her multiple times. This was after the two had an argument. She wanted to go home to India and he wanted to stay in the US. After taking his wife's life, he fled the scene. Now, customers at the store grew concerned after they realized that no one was in the store to serve them. A police officer just so happened to be nearby and decided to check out the scene. That's when he found Palak. Badrush Kumar has been on the run ever since. A $100,000 reward is available to anyone who can provide information leading to his arrest. All right, guys, that's all for today's video. Just a reminder to stay safe out there. Uh, I feel a little unsettled after today's video, so let's move on to our comment shout out portion. I'll be shouting out comments from the video, top 10 unsettling signals from parallel universes that no human can solve. Joseph Josiah one commented, parallel universes do exist. I've had so many weird experiences to know that they do. So does time travel. So did Joseph just admit that um, he's a time traveler as well? Also, you can't just be like, I've had so many experiences with parallel universes and then just not tell us. So let us know. Delik Rusty commented, I had a dream where the parallel version of me wasn't a loser and was actually cool, LMAO. No, stop it. Positive thoughts, okay? I don't care, you're cool. I say you're cool, you're cool. Don't think like that, okay? And Sunny Climate commented, Twin Peaks, watch Twin Peaks. Yes, I know I have to. It's on my list of things I need to watch. I have a very long list of things to watch and I have no time to watch it, but 
yes, it is on there. All right, guys, that's all the comments I'm shouting out for today's video. Make sure to comment something down below for a chance to be featured in my next comment shout out. And as always, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to Most Amazing Top 10 for more amazing videos. I've been your host, Lindsay Ivan, and I'll see you when I see ya.